sketch the graph of f of x equal to x minus 2 over x minus 1. Now, of my list of items that I go through, I'm going to sketch a graph, so let's proceed. Now first, we want to consider the domain. Since I have a rational function, our domain is just going to be the points where the denominator is non-zero. So our domain is going to be x not equal to 1. Now, what's going to happen at x equal to 1? Since we're dividing by 0, I have a vertical asymptote, so what we're going to need to do is check points on each side to determine the behavior as I come into the asymptote from the left and from the right. So let's take a look at our function. Now, if I'm near 1 and I'm on the left, what's going to happen? Well, if I take any number near 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So if I go a little bit away from 1, it's still going to stay a negative number. If I'm in the denominator, what's going to happen? If I'm on the left side, well, consider a point like 0.9. If I put that in there, we're going to have a negative number also. So if I come in from the left, it's going to be a negative over a negative or a positive. Meaning, coming in from the left, my vertical asymptote goes to plus infinity. So if we take a look at the graph. That's going to be like this, going up. Coming in from the right, same idea. On the top, we're going to have a negative. But now on the bottom, coming in from the right, so it'll be a point like 1.1. And so we're going to be positive in the bottom. I'll have a negative over a positive. So when I come in from the right, we're going to be going down to minus infinity. So that's behavior near the vertical asymptote. What else can we do? We can also look for zeros. So I'll have a zero for f if the numerator is equal to zero. So we'll have a zero at x equal to 2. So we'll mark that point off. Note, if I want a point on the other side, I could just put zero into my function, and then that'll give me the intercept equal to y equals two. So that'll be that point right there. Then I have to worry about behavior as I let x go off to plus infinity and minus infinity. Now, in this case, as I go off to plus or minus infinity, the behavior is going to be the same, so I'll just put them in the same argument. So let's take a look. I have x minus 2 over x minus 1. I can divide top and bottom by x. So I'll have 1 minus 2 over x over 1 minus 1 over x. As x goes to plus or minus infinity, 2 over x and 1 over x are going to go down to 0. So the limit's just going to be 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So this means we have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 1, and as I go to the left or the right infinitely, our function's going to go to that asymptote. So be like this and like this, and we'll have to wait a while to see if it's going to be coming in from the top or the bottom of the asymptote, but that's the general idea for now. Now, I've done everything that I can do without taking the derivative. So let's take the derivative, and then we'll look for critical points and regions of increasing and decreasing. Take my derivative, I have a quotient, so we apply the quotient rule. So low d high, less high d low, over low squared. I crunch that down, that gives me one over x minus one squared. We wanna look for critical points. First, where's the derivative equal to zero? The only way this can be equal to zero is if the numerator is equal to zero, and that never happens. So that means we'll never have a horizontal tangent line on our graph. Next, I want to worry about the derivative being undefined. That's where we're dividing by zero. So you'll note here, we'll get undefined when x is equal to one. Okay, now that's not a real critical point. That's actually where the vertical asymptote is. So we have no critical points. If I want to consider regions of increasing and decreasing, we're going to have a discontinuity where our vertical asymptote is, so that's going to split my region. So what I'll do is I'll draw a box in, and then I'll put a mark off at x equal to 1. So I'll have to check on each side of that region. Actually, we won't need to check anything, because if you note, when x is not equal to 1, 
okay, when I'm not dividing by zero, what's gonna happen? When I have one over something squared, something squared is always equal to either zero or a positive number. And I just decided it's not gonna be zero. So we're always gonna have off of the asymptote, the derivative is positive. So we're always gonna be increasing. So I fill my boxes in as so, increasing and increasing. So that's everything I can do with the first derivative. Next, let's look for inflection points and regions of concave up and concave down. What we do here, I take my second derivative, what am I gonna get? Well, our first derivative was one over x minus one squared. So it's x minus one to the minus two. We hit that with the chain rule. The minus two comes down, the exponent becomes minus three, we leave the inside as it is, and then I multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just one. So my second derivative is minus two over x minus one cubed. I'll check a point on each region. So let's go with minus one and two. Okay, so we're still split the vertical asymptote there. Minus one goes in, so what comes out? I have minus two over minus eight. So it's a negative over a negative, which is a positive. So we're concave up on this side of one. I put a two in there, that gives me minus two over eight. So that's gonna give me a negative number, some concave down on that side of x equals one. All right, that's all my data. All I need to do now is connect the dots. So on this side of one, we're increasing concave up, and I have to get the asymptotes to match up. So increasing concave up, go from our horizontal asymptote to our vertical asymptote as so, like that. On the other region, I'm gonna have increasing concave down, we're gonna match up the asymptotes, so I go like this, and that gives me my other arc. So that's gonna be the function of our graph.